What up everybody, Joe White here, and uh, I am here in Ohio at a rest area. This is where I'm spending the night here. Um, just got done seeing the movie Oppenheimer um, about uh, the famous nuclear physicist Dr. Oppenheimer who is the father of the nuclear bomb who may or may not have been a communist depending on who you believe and I, I honestly did not know that at the beginning of World War II there was a communist party here in the United States because in school you're always taught you know F the commies and we were all gung ho against uh we were all gung-ho against Japan and China and all them other people and the Japanese and every and the, and the Germans and then the Russians with the Cold War or whatever the case may be. I know there's somebody going to be in the comments going, we were not at war with the Russians. We were not at war with the Chinese. We were not at war. Uh, look, I get it, okay? I'm no historian. I love history and I love the study of history, but I'm not a historian by any means. Um... Hmm. I should be. I'm right here near a cell phone tower, so I should have good reception out here tonight. Anyway, um, I I liked the movie. The problem is I liked everybody except the guy who played Oppenheimer because he just has this same... He never really cracks a smile throughout the whole movie. And maybe it was supposed to be played like that. I mean, it, it reminds me of a... Another movie that I'll get into here in another video coming soon, where I guess it's designed to make you feel a certain way, but it's like there are other ways of making me feel that way without going to this extreme. Um, same blank stare on his face throughout the whole movie. Yes, that guy walked all the way across the damn rest area to fucking spit. And now I guess he's going to do push-ups or some shit. Whatever. Anyway, let's get off that guy. Um, now he's stretching. He must be getting ready to run or something. Truckers do do exercises, folks. But you look like a tool when you do them out in the open like that. I'm sorry, you just do. Um, long story short, I like the movie. I need to watch it again because I got very confused as to who was who. And that's not that's not the film's fault. Um... I, I tried to watch Game of Thrones three different occasions because of the same reason. I had a hard time keeping up with who was who and what was what. Um, that's me. That That's that's not indicative or indictive of the film. Um, the story for me, though, was a bit confusing of, okay, this guy got this guy to do this and this and this. and But toward the end of the film, it kind of all came together. Um... Uh, Robert Downey Jr. Let's talk about Robert Downey Jr. Robert Downey Jr. for me, um, I believe his name is Mark Kermode. K-E-R-M-O-D-E. -E. He's a famous British film critic. Um, he did Kermode and Mayo for BBC Radio for many years, where uh, Mr. Mayo would host, and for the large part, Kermode would give the reviews. And... Every time a Robert Downey Jr. movie came up on those film, on those uh, th those radio shows, Kermode would always say that Robert Downey Jr. has a certain cadence when he acts. Continue on the road. Thank you, GPS. Anyway, um, let me unplug that thing. Give me one second here. We're gonna unplug the GPS that way it doesn't talk to us anymore. Um, and I and I will agree with Mr. Kermode. To a certain extent, Robert Downey Jr. always has a certain kind of style when he talks. Kermode always is like, it's da-da-da, 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 da-da-da. And, and, and if you watch his work, you will pick up on the fact that, oh, that's Robert Downey Jr. I will say that the first time I saw Robert Downey Jr. on screen in this movie, and the first time I heard him speak in this movie... That was... I didn't know it was him. I did not know it was him. And then... The the certain cadence... The da -da 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 it, it, it comes and goes throughout the entire movie. Um, 
just watch a couple of Robert Downey Jr. movies. Like, watch him play Iron Man, and then go watch him play in Tropic Thunder. Watch him play in The Fugitive, or not Fugitive, U.S. Marshals, which I'm one of the few that actually like that movie. And you will know that the acting style is pretty much the same throughout. He does a good job with each individual character, and he's a brilliant actor, don't get me wrong, but he does have a certain way of talking. Um, and that kind of comes and goes here. Um, but that being said, he does an excellent job in this movie. And if he does not get at least a nomination for Best Supporting Actor, him... They're, they're, this movie is going to clean up at the Oscars. I can see that now. If it doesn't, it would shock me. I just hope that the Academy does not forget about this film when we get into the December and January award season. Um, maybe because it's coming out right smack dab in the middle of the year, they won't forget it. But I, I, I'm hoping that they don't. Because this movie, for the most part, is a is an absolute gem. It's epic. Um... So much so that I want to see it again. Um, I will say this. Harry, I think it's Harry Truman. I didn't know that that was Gary Oldman. And Gary, he's only in the movie for maybe about... Maybe about five minutes. If that. But he's very impactful as, as Harry Truman. Um, let's see. Florence Pugh. Florence Pugh. I don't want to give away too much. She's not in the movie a whole lot. But let's just say now that we've seen everything that Florence Pugh has to offer. The movie is not for kids. It's for adults. There's nudity and sex scenes in it. And let's just say, Florence Pugh, you are a beautiful woman. That's all I can say. <laughs> um, let's see. What else here? Um... I will also say that Matt Damon. I'm on the fence about Damon's character. There's there's points in this movie where he does an excellent job playing a, a, a general in this movie. And then there's other times where other scenes in the movie where I don't buy it at all. I don't buy it at all. Um, I think if they would have gotten somebody a little bit older to play the character... Um, I go into, I'll put it to you this way, there's a, there, one of the earlier Marvel movies, Captain America, the first Avenger, Tommy Lee Jones plays a colonel or general or a, a top rank official in the army, and I buy him 100%. Um, this movie is set right around the same time period, right around the same time frame, in a completely separate Universe that is not comic booky, and I believe the comic book general or, or or higher up more than I believe Matt Damon. Does Damon do a good job with it? Yes. I just think that they could have gotten somebody older. I really do. Um, I I would not be surprised if he gets a best supporting actor nomination for this. The guy who plays Oppenheimer, though, getting back to him, he just has a complete blank stare on his face the entire time. He does a good job with his eyes. You're really drawn to his eyes in the movie. But a lot of people like Jeremy Johns and everybody else are going, I love his reacting in the film, and I love his reaction when the bomb, when the test bomb, when Trinity goes off. And that's about, you know, I will say, that right there is the best part of the movie, is when they are doing the Trinity test and they're getting ready to light that damn thing and, 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 and blow up half of the freaking desert of New Mexico. That right there is epic. And you're waiting. You're, 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 the bomb, I, I'm going to spoil it. I, I, tune out now if you don't want spoilers. My, my, I'll go, I'll go ahead and tell you this, wrap up my non-spoiler review and tell you, is the movie worth watching? Hell yeah. Is it worth going out of your way to see in theaters? Yes. Is it all talk and no action? Pretty much, yes. It very much goes from a a story of a guy making something to a political thriller, all in one. I mean, it's very... I mean, there's even a little bit of courtroom drama thrown in there. And they tell you time and time again, it's not a trial. It's not a trial. But you get that feeling that, hey, this dude's on trial. Overall, 
if I had to give Oppenheimer a star rating, four out of five stars. Um, I'll even say four and a quarter out of five stars. There's a lot to like about this movie. Florence Pugh is good. I believe it's Emily Blunt who plays Oppenheimer's wife, Kitty. She does an excellent job. There's parts at the end of this movie where I'm cheering for her going, Fuck yeah, you're the only one with balls to stand up to these people. And then I've seen it panned in the in the in the uh, in in the the uh, reviews where they did not like the women, the female characters. I loved them. I thought they were some of the best parts of the film. Um, ah, sorry, but there's a part in the movie. Spoilers ahead. Go ahead and click off now if you don't want to be spoiled. Three, two, one. Okay. There's a part in the movie where they. Truman is pressing them to, hey, are we going to have this bomb ready to go by the middle of July? And they go, they're going, well, we got to test it first. And they go through a couple of miniature tests, testing small bombs. And you see where the bomb, they, this is brilliant writing, brilliant directing. It, mo most times you, you see nuclear bombs. I'm going to use my hands here. You see the bomb go off and it's boom and you hear the sound and everything like that this movie every time they light off a bomb you get the impression that you're there at the site where they're testing the bomb and one thing points that out one thing bats that home and that's the way sound travels they realize that you're going to see the flash before you feel the impact and the sound and hear the sound of the bomb going off. And that's something they could have very easily overlooked. They could have just, boom, there it goes, like a firework going off. No. When they test the bomb, when they do the big Trinity test, you see the bomb go off. And it's a good maybe two to three minutes worth of movie where you see everybody. One person's applying sunblock too heavily to his face. And they're handing out UV glasses to people. And they're all having to lay down on cots on the ground. And they're telling people, you know, don't look at the flash directly, blah, blah, blah. And the bomb goes off and you see these people looking at it through their glasses and they react to it. And then, about a good two minutes later, you hear the boom in the theater. And I'll be honest with you, it comes through as a bit of a jump scare. Even though you know it's coming, you know it's coming. It still kind of startled me. Um, that is brilliantly done. Golly, man. If, if Christopher Nolan isn't nominated for Best Director for this film, they're, they're really shitting the bed with the Academy on this. If he does not win Best Director for this film, it's, I'll be, I'll go on record to say it's probably the best film I've seen all year. Four and a half star, four and a quarter stars, as I said. It's, it's brilliant. I just did not like the lead actor. Um, I felt like he could have showed a little bit more emotion and when they're creating this and when the get, when they get the calculations right. The guy who plays Einstein in this movie. You know, there's a common theory out there that Einstein helped with the Manhattan Project. And, and, and had a first hand in it, and he didn't. But the guy who plays, you know, there's only one other person that I've ever seen play Einstein on screen. And I know there had to have been other movies with him in it. But there was a movie that came out in the late 90s called IQ. And it had Tim Robbins in it, and Walter Matthau played Albert Einstein and did a good job. Al he was funny. It was supposed to be a comedic role of Albert Einstein's later years. It's a funny movie. Go look it up. Um, it's called IQ. Um, but the guy who plays Einstein in this movie kicks ass. He's not going to get a best supporting direct, uh, best supporting nomination for it because I don't think he's in it that long. Um, long enough to really be, you know, he's pretty much an afterthought. But he really does a good job. Um, let's see, what else? Robert Downey Jr., we went over him. Matt Damon, we went over him. The guy who plays Oppenheimer, I just... Felt like they could have gotten somebody better, or he could have played it a little bit less stoic. Um, Florence Pugh's character. Spoiler review. She dies. 
halfway through the movie. Um, her and her, they're at a meeting for communist party members, which that's the part that really struck me is, wow, they're fucking people are openly meeting in the U.S. having communist parties. Like, they support Russia and China and everybody else. Um, but it switches and she becomes Oppenheimer's first love interest. On again, off again, love interest. Even though this woman has a husband. Um, and then Oppenheimer finds someone else his, who would become his wife and the mother of his children. But yet Oppenheimer, that's the only thing I did like. I, I like the way the character was written. I like the script for this movie. He's not a perfect guy. He's a bit of a... I mean, I spent half the movie hating the guy. Going, dude, what the fuck are you doing with your life? But she becomes his... You know, he, he meets up with Emily Blunt's character. And Emily Blunt... I think it's Emily Blunt. I'm sorry if it's not. Um, anyway, he meets up with her... And they have well, they have kids and they and everything like that. But yet he's still seeing Florence Pugh's character on the side. And the movie really makes you question whether or not this guy was a communist because he's hanging out with a lot of people who say yes they're communists and Marxists. Um, but at at one point he meets up with her while he's married and tells her, look. I'm going to be thrown off this Manhattan Project and I'll be arrested and, this, and a lot of people's livelihoods will be at stake if, if I continue to see you. And she's so distraught by this because she needs him. Nobody else in the world gets her like him. And you get the feeling that nobody else in the world gets him like her. But yet he loves this other woman that, he ste that she steals from another man. Or that he steals from another man, rather. I mean, he they they make no mistake about it. Oppenheimer was a womanizer. Um, but Florence Pugh ends up drowning, her, taking a bunch of pills and drowning herself in the bathtub. And it's a very very powerful scene when she dies. Um, it's a powerful scene when he finds out about it and he tells her. He tells his wife. His wife finds him. Um, and, and he's openly crying. He, that's the only part of the jo movie that I liked the guy who played Oppenheimer in. That's the only part of the movie where he really truly shows any emotion. Is when he finds out that his mistress has passed. Um, the sets for the movie. New Mexico is like that. A lot of people think New Mexico is just deserts and cactus and everything else. And there is a lot of that in New Mexico. But New Mexico also has mountains. And it does snow there during the winter. It gets very cold there in the winter, especially at night. Um, so set design, costume design in this movie was really good. Um, the direction of this movie was really good. Christopher Nolan, man. Christopher Nolan just does a bang-up job in this movie. Um... But yeah, that's my overall review. Go see it. It's worth seeing. Four and a quarter stars. The only thing really bumping it, not giving me that extra three quarters of a star, is the guy who played Oppenheimer. And when you're when you're the center of attention and you're on screen for almost every every frame of the movie, it is enough to detract me. When I don't like the way the characters played, I don't like the actor. Um, Maybe he can redeem himself in playing something else. Another thing that really detracts me is as much as I liked Robert Downey Jr.'s performance, the, the, the cadence of his acting does come and go. And the accent that he's trying to provide does come and go. It's like one minute you can't tell that that's Robert Downey Jr. The next minute he turns his head or looks a certain way. And oh yeah, there he is. Um, but he's going to probably get a Best Supporting Actor nomination. Matt Damon, I, he's probably going to get one, even though I would not give him one for this. Um, but yeah, Oppenheimer, good movie, go see it.